Okay, what's up guys? It is that time of year where the bees are flying everywhere and the carpenter bees are trying to be woodworkers. We don't like that. We don't want them. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple bee trap that does work that I've actually made myself to see if it worked and it did work. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on what you need to make it, how to make it, where to put it, and why does it work. So let's go. Okay, so to make this thing, you're gonna actually need some very simple things. You're gonna need a glass mason jar. A lot of times you can find these at flea markets, but what's important is you need a metal lid, whether it's one that's solid or one that's got the ring and the seal, that's fine, whatever works. You're also gonna need a drill. You're gonna need a half inch drill bit and a three quarter inch drill bit. I personally do like to use the three quarter inch paddle bit, which as you can see has a flat side. This works, comes in handy for a part of this project that you'll see coming up. And the other one, I just happen to have one of these brad tip ones, but you can use just your standard drill bits if you have them laying around, or you can use the paddle bit version, but half inch and three quarter inch. And then three screws. I'm going to use some three one inch drywall screws, but basically any screw that will go through metal into wood. Speaking of the wood, ideally you want to use a really small piece of four by four, but I know that most of the time in your house, if you're trying to make up some of these really quick, you may not have four by four, but you may have a two by four. So I've got this scrap piece that I'm going to use in this video. You're also going to want to make sure that you have the proper PPE, which is going to be safety glasses and gloves. And you'll see why they come in handy later in this video. So we're going to take our piece of two by four. It really doesn't matter what type of thing you're using. If this is four by four, you can skip this part, but you're going to, want to measure a five inch piece. So if you're doing four by four, you're only going to have to do one. But because we're going to double and stack this, we're going to actually have to cut two of these. I'm going to cut these off with using my miter saw, but you can use a circular saw or a hand saw. All right, so now at this point, we've got our two blocks. Like I said, this that you'll be able to skip if you have a actual four before. And then we're just going to apply some glue and glue these two blocks together. Give it a little squish to get all the glue going. This is nothing that's supposed to be extremely fancy. I'm going to throw a clamp on it. Alright, now at this point we're going to just have to let this sit. So the glue will harden up. And usually about 30 minutes to an hour it will be usually at least workable. One thing you could do if you wanted to kind of keep moving at this point is throw some screws in here. However, that's going to potentially give you problems with some of the holes we're going to drill into this thing. And so it's just easier to let this thing harden up and then we'll jump to the next step. All right, so the block of wood's ready to roll. And so the next step, what we're going to do is actually attach this lid to the bottom. But before we do, I want to explain something. What we're going to essentially end up doing is taking our three quarter inch drill bit and drilling up about that far. Uh, maybe just about an inch or so from the end. So what you'd want to do is maybe put a little piece of tape on your drill bit Just to serve as a marker for how far you're going to go and that will Inherently just fill up about a void like so all the way up and then we're going to take our 3 8 drill and drill in at a 45 degree angle or pretty close to it up through and you could do it on all four sides so with that being said here's a 45 degree angle just like that it doesn't have to be much but it's basically creating a pathway for the bee which I'll explain a little bit later in the video so let's take our block stick it on one end and take your lid put it right there using your drill take one of your screws and we're gonna screw this to it now you could pre-drill a hole in this. I'm using some screws that have a pretty nice tip to it. So it ought to just go right in. But just put a little bit of pressure, go on the end, and push it down in. We'll do the same thing on another screw. Kind of making a little bit of a triangle. Now the next thing we're going to do is take our 3 quarter inch drill bit and we're going to drill straight down in the center and like I said once you bottom out with this you're going to want to stop but before we do that this is where we're going to want to put our gloves on because when we drill through this there's going to be little pieces of metal and we do not want to get the metal into our eyes or into our hands. Being careful 
put your drill bit right in the center and grasp it firmly and apply a little bit of pressure. You're going to want to go a little slow at first until you get through that metal. There we go. I'm already through it. At this point, you could just get all the metal off that is lingering. And then we're just going to bottom it out until we get to our tape. Now we switch to the 3 turn it on its side, and we're going to see, there's the angle, we're going to drill up, it's going to go up, so because we're starting here, we're going to go pretty low on this, start a little straight, and then as you get going, turn it to 45 degrees, and you'll feel it bust through into the other hole. So now we got the block of wood, we've got the four holes, the hole in the bottom, and then the lid. You're going to basically take the jar, twist it on there, and you're virtually done. Might want to put a little hanger on it. I like to use one of these little fish hook hangers. You could do that. Or you could just simply set it where you know the bees are. And that's going to lead into the next thing is where to put these things and how they actually work. So when you're placing this, you're going to want to make sure that you place it in a location that you know you've got carpenter bees. You don't want to just go sit it out on a table that is out in the open. Find holes in existing boards that you know that are active and they're going in and out of those holes. Set it next there. You can hang it and make sure that you leave it. Don't touch it. Let it be. And over a couple days, you should notice a couple, one or two bees, maybe more. And once you get a couple of them, I, I have noticed empty it out, dump it, and re, you know, get it cleared out. Because I don't know if it does something to them mentally, but they don't seem like they want to keep going into it once there's already two or three in there. So as far as how this thing works, it's very simple. What happens is the bee is buzzing around and he goes up into these holes, all four sides. Once he gets here, he can't go any further. And of course, he's looking for the path of least resistance because he thinks this is already a hole that's been made by another bee. So then he'll come down here because he sees light. He gets in here and he gets stuck. At this point, he's buzzing around. He can't get oriented. Once he gets in there, he pretty much gets stuck and then he just dies. And the process keeps on repeating itself as many times as possible. So I had great success with the first one that I made. I'm excited to get a second one out there. I've already caught about three bees and it's only been a few days. So if this thing helped you out and you captured the bees and you're trying to get rid of them, um, and it's worked, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope that this has helped you out and hopefully your kids and your dogs and even you won't be bothered by the carpenter bees anymore and we can stop their woodworking and we can do our own. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time right here in the workshop.